In this video we're going to look at the non-inverting amplifier. We'll see how it works and we'll also see how easy these circuits are to design. Then at the end we'll have some helpful design tips for these circuits. Operational amplifiers are very cheap and they're widely available. You can buy ones like these for very little money. The chips come in many forms from leaded to surface mount and their performance, cost and availability make them an obvious choice for many circuits. The operational amplifier is generally depicted using its triangle circuit symbol as we see here. Probably the most notable attribute of the op amp is its very high gain. It may be anywhere upwards from 10,000 and that's as near to infinity as we need for most calculations. The op amp also has a very high input impedance and a low output impedance. For many applications the input impedance can be considered as infinite and the loading on the previous stage ignored and the output impedance considered as zero, and again, this can usually be ignored. If a signal is applied to the non-inverting input of the amplifier, the signal will come out in the same sense as it appears at the input. In other words, an increasing input level at the non-inverting input will result in the output level increasing. Conversely, a signal applied to the inverting input will appear 180 degrees out of phase at the output. It is inverted, and any increase on the input will cause the output to fall in level. One of the key parameters for any amplifier is its gain. So let's take a look at this to define exactly what we mean. If we put a signal in of let's say 1 volt peak to peak and we see an output of 5 volts peak to peak, the voltage gain is V out over V in so we can see that the voltage gain is 5 over 1 which is 5. For the non-inverting amplifier the output is not inverted so the gain is plus 5. For an inverting amplifier, the output is inverted, and this is reflected in the gain equation, and the gain can be said to be minus 5. If we look at the circuit for the non-inverting amplifier, we see it has two resistors connected to the op-amp chip. R2 and R1 provide a potential divider network, which controls the level of feedback. As they are connected to the inverting input of the amplifier, the feedback is said to be negative, and it has the effect of reducing the gain but it also brings with it many benefits including flat bandwidth, low distortion and the like. If we want to calculate the gain, we use the formula 1 plus R2 divided by R1. So let's take an example of designing an amplifier with a gain of 11. We could choose R1 to be 1K, and then slotting in all the figures we can see that R2 works out to be 10K. The input impedance of the non-inverting amplifier is very high, unlike its cousin, the inverting amplifier, where the impedance is that of the input resistor. As a result, this amplifier configuration can be used when we don't want to load the previous stage. We may want to AC couple the op-amp to block a steady DC voltage and only allow varying signals like audio through. We can do this by adding capacitors on the input and the output. When we do this, we need to provide a path to ground for the bias current for the input transistors in the op-amp. This path is provided by R3, if it's not present, the circuit won't work properly and the output will run into one of the power rails. We also need to ensure that the circuit will pass the low frequency signals we want. We need to calculate the low frequency breakpoint. This is the point where the signals have fallen by 3 dBs. This occurs when the capacitor reactance Xc equals the resistance for that circuit. For our input, this is when the reactance of C1 equals R3. We know the general formula for reactants, and as we know that Xc equals R, we can substitute this in the formula and then rearrange it to find the capacitance we need. As an example, we can put some figures into the formula. Let's say R3 is 100k and our breakpoint is 100Hz. We can drop these into the formula and calculate the figures, and with a little bit of arithmetic we can find that C1 is equal to 16.6 nanofarads. We can apply the same logic to the output using the load impedance as the dominating impedance in the circuit as well. The op-amp power supplies are also important. Although the power connections are not normally shown on a circuit to reduce its complexity, occasionally they may be included. Normally op-amps run from a positive and a negative supply. If you have a dual power supply with plus and minus supplies, that's great. You'll typically need plus and minus 10 or 12 volts, if you run it off less, then you won't be able to get such a large output swing, but there again, you may not need it. 
You can also run the circuit from a single supply by creating a half supply point. It then looks to the op amp as if it actually has its plus and minus supplies. R3 and R4 form a potential divider to create the half supply voltage. They're normally the same, often around 10k or possibly a bit more. As the input and output will be sitting at half the supply, you'll need input and output capacitors as we saw before. Also a capacitor C3 is needed from R1 to ground. This stops the ground potential from being placed on the inverting input and it enables the circuit to operate correctly. This capacitor needs to have a very low leakage, otherwise the inverting input will be drawn lower in voltage and this will result in the output hitting the supply voltage rail. Generally, electrolytic types are not suitable, so tantalum or ceramic capacitors are good dependent upon the circuit requirements. So a few hints and tips. Don't make the value of R2 too high. It's often best to keep the value down to no more than 100k or so. And don't make the gain of each individual stage too high, otherwise the bandwidth may be limited. But that's a topic for another video. 10 to 20 is very good, 50 may be the absolute tops dependent upon the circuit and the requirements. Designing with op amps can be simple. This simple amplifier works well and can be easily used to provide excellent performance using cheap op amp chips.